Hi there, I'm going to walk through how I solder fine pitched chips with my USB microscope. In this video, I'm assembling a ROM module I designed for vintage Apple Macintosh computers. The flash chip I'm soldering is a 48 pin TSOP package with a pitch of 0.5 millimeters. To the naked eye, each pin on the chip is pretty small. I use my microscope to help me align the chip on the pads, so you can see I'm doing that right now. Before I aligned the chip, I added a dab of flux. The flux will help me tack down the chip with a small amount of solder. In order to stop the chip from moving, I hold it in place by pushing down on it with a blunt object. I used my tweezers. Now you can see I'm touching my iron to the corner to solder it down. I did use too much solder on this one. Preferably I would have only tacked down a single pin rather than three of them. Using too much solder to tack it down will come back to bite me later. Now that the top is tacked down, I'm aligning the bottom pins with the pads on the PCB. Once I have the bottom aligned, I will hold it in place and tack down another corner. And there I go. Once again, I used too much solder. At this point, you can see me adding some more flux to tack down another corner. I probably didn't need to do this, but it helps to have diagonally opposite corners tacked down rather than two corners on the same side. I did a little bit better of a job this time only tacking down two pins instead of three, but it's still a little too much solder. Here's another attempt at tacking down a chip. First I add flux to the corners I'm going to tack down. Again, I align the chip over the pads, hold it down with my tweezers, and tack the corner down. I used too much solder on this one, too. Same with this corner, too much solder. Finally, I'm going to show a more successful attempt at tacking down the chip. On the top, I only tacked down two pins. And even better, on the bottom, I only tacked down a single pin. Not having the extra solder will help when I do the drag soldering to solder the rest of the pins. Here's a better view of the single soldered pin. Now I'm adding flux to all of the chip's pins in preparation for drag soldering with a hoof tip. I'm probably adding quite a bit too much flux, but too much flux is okay. It doesn't hurt anything at all. The flux I'm using is Chip Quick No Clean Flux. It gets pretty sticky, but it's easy to clean off with isopropyl alcohol. Okay, here is the drag soldering procedure. I add enough solder to the hoof tip to slightly bulge out, 
and then drag it across the pins that are waiting to be soldered. Unfortunately, I'm starting to run into a few solder bridges. I'll fix that by adding some extra flux. Those last couple of pins are being stubborn. The problem stems from using too much solder to tack down that corner. The easiest thing to do is suck up the excess solder with solder wick. Those last two bridged pins are okay, they're supposed to be bridged. Once again, I'm running into solder bridges, so I'll add a little extra flux and try again. I'm really having some trouble getting this to solder. Again, it's because I used too much solder. I was hoping to fix these bridges with just flux, but sometimes you just have to go back to the solder wick. A lot of times after using the wick, I like to add a little bit of extra solder to make sure the pin's got enough solder. On this chip, I'm not sure what happened. It seems like maybe the flux just wasn't activating properly. Usually I can fix something like this by just adding more flux. Here's a nice example of what happens if you try to use solder wick after it's been used. It just doesn't grab any of the solder. After cutting off the used portion, it works perfectly. Like I said earlier, don't worry about that solder bridge on the right side. That's intentional. Here's an example of nearly perfect drag soldering. Okay, now I'm doing the tops of the chips, now that I've finished the bottoms. I'm having some trouble here, so I'll come back to this chip in a moment. Meanwhile, here's another chip I'm going to solder.
This bridging here is again caused by using too much solder. Sometimes by using enough flux you can actually fix it without using solder wick. I'll demonstrate that here. All right. Okay, now back to that first chip. Sometimes adding flux helps and sometimes it doesn't. Here's an example of where it just doesn't and eventually I have to use wick. Well, I fixed it a little bit, but if I had just used wick in the first place, I could have saved a lot of time. A small bridge like this is usually fixable with just the soldering iron, as you'll see in just a minute. Now this chip is really interesting because I think I bent a pin while I was aligning the chip on the pads or something. Look over on the left side and you'll see one of the pins is actually overlapping another pin. That pause in the action there is me wondering what happened. It turns out this is fixable, but first I'm going to finish the rest of the chip soldering. I'm going to go ahead and finish this last chip too, and then I'll go back to the messed up chip. Okay, back to the overlapping pins. Here's a closer look at what's going on. You'll see it better after I've heated up the flux. First, what I'm going to do is remove as much excess solder as I can from those two pins. Now what I'm going to do is heat up the pins while trying to push them apart using tweezers. You can see that helped a little bit. Okay, let's try a little bit more now. It's looking even better now. I almost have them separated.
Okay, one more try here. Let's see how it goes. And voila, I've separated the pins. Now to be completely honest, I don't think I could have done that without the microscope. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit more solder just to make sure all the pins are completely soldered. Whoops, I added a little too much solder. You can actually see me in the reflection there. This is nothing that can't be fixed with a little bit of extra flux and some soldering technique. And there you have it.